you, John. Thank you very much. All right, hello everyone. Uh, it's lovely to be here, and thanks so much for, for taking the time to come and listen to a fellow like me. I'm here today uh, to talk about how to stand out on LinkedIn. First of all, first of all my name is John O'Hara. I am the founder and director of O Interviews. It's an interview coaching agency, and I've made it my job to help job seekers, career changers, and people who just want to do something they love move into the, the, the career of their dreams and something that they love to do. Speaking of things people love to do, it definitely took me a while to figure it out for myself. I started out my career in psychiatric nursing, so I'm a mental health nurse. That has actually never worked as a mental health nurse. Um, I uh, moved to Canada pretty much after graduating with every intention of continuing my career in nursing. And I decided while I was waiting on my registration to come through to be able to continue nursing in Canada to take just an entry-level sales job at Apple. Uh, and now what I didn't expect is that I would absolutely love my work at Apple and sales. So against all advice, my mother nearly gave birth to a kitten when I told her I wasn't going to continue nursing and I was going to do this instead. I started a degree or a master's degree in leadership and human resource management and after a while, I worked my way up to become a people manager, or what we call a human resource manager at Apple. Uh, and I loved it. It was fantastic. Fast forward a few years, I came back to Ireland um, full, full of dreams. Uh, and I worked in marketing. I've worked in business advice for export businesses and creative businesses. Uh, and I've worked as a careers guidance counselor at a uh, university. So to say my background is varied is the understatement of the month. Um, so, all that to say, I am here to convince you of something today. Uh, and that is... There we go. Oh, I'm definitely going to forget to use this. Um, I'm here to convince you of the power of LinkedIn as a networking tool for yourself and your career that can help grow your career exponentially. So... LinkedIn is a powerful networking tool. It is a fantastic resource that's available to you to connect with influencers, decision makers, and professionals at every level in the industry of your choice. If you're a job seeker, it's a powerful research tool. So you can go on LinkedIn, you can learn about a company's values, you can learn about who's who, you can learn what's important and I suppose what's trending within that industry and use that to your advantage. You can share your own knowledge. So sharing your own knowledge, your own expertise, uh, and you can establish yourself as influencer is the wrong word, but we'll say a thought leader within your industry. You can build influence and develop your personal brand, professional brand rather, and establish yourself further. And look, we've all heard the stories uh, of people getting random job offers on LinkedIn that does happen, and it can happen to you. Um, it is a fantastic tool to grow your career. All right. Quick few stats here about LinkedIn. Um, I won't spend too long on it. 900 million users worldwide. Every week, 50 million people are applying for new jobs on LinkedIn. And apparently, this is on the internet, so it must be true, uh, nine applications are submitted every second. Um, so it's fair to say that LinkedIn is a go-to resource for job seekers. Not only that, 75% of uh, recruiters, according to LinkedIn themselves, use LinkedIn to screen and hire candidates. So if you are a job seeker and you're not using LinkedIn, you're missing out. Beautiful. So today I'm going to talk to you about my three Ps. Uh, and if you can follow the advice and follow the roadmap, we'll say, that I'm going to show you today, you will experience greater success on the platform. You'll reap rewards on, in your career that you wouldn't otherwise have received or reaped. Okay? And my three Ps are profile, presence, and persistence. I must warn you, I will warn you, standing out on LinkedIn, it is the product or the result of daily habits that compound over time. 
This isn't something that you can go home today and put in a mammoth effort and then all of a sudden you're successful on the platform. This does require time. It requires resistance, uh, persistence as well. Okay. Let's jump into profile. First of all, who actually has LinkedIn here? Everyone. Do you use it? Are you, are you on, a, on the platform daily? Oh, very good, very good. Now, how do you find it? Yeah, fantastic. All right. Okay, well, look, hopefully what I can say here will help you elevate that. Uh, and those of you that aren't on the platform or aren't using it, well, hopefully I can help you too. So I'm going to jump into our first P, which is profile. Your LinkedIn profile is like a living, breathing CV online and can be accessed by uh, recruiters, hiring managers, people of influence within your target industry at any time. The access that your target audience has to you is unprecedented. So it's really important that you build a profile that is made for them, that is built for the person uh, that you want to read your profile. What's the first thing, if I click on your LinkedIn profile now, what's the first thing I'm going to lay my eyes on? Picture, yeah, absolutely, you got it. Um, we're a bit, I'm a bit shallow, um, and I think it's fair to say that many of us can be. Uh, we'll lay our eyes on the picture first. And many of us will cast a judgment on what we see on that picture. Your profile picture could be the reason that a recruiter or a hiring manager chooses to click on your profile or decides to move on. So it's important to get it right, okay? Um, there's a few things that I want you to consider, uh, and that is choosing a, a high-quality headshot image, okay? I want your, your, uh, it to be a head and shoulder shot, uh, and I want you to take up around 60% of the frame. Now, I'm all for authenticity. I'm all for you know, being ourselves, etc. But we also want the, the profile photo to match the network or match the platform. LinkedIn is a professional network, so let's put ourselves forward in that manner. Um, we want to avoid distracting backgrounds. So, you know, me on my hiking trip out in, you know, Mount Aragle behind me. It's a lovely photo, maybe for Instagram, but not for LinkedIn, okay? And the golden rule is dress appropriately. I don't mean professionally, I mean appropriately. I want you to wear clothing that is appropriate for the industry that you're targeting or the industry that you're in. So, for example, if you are, if your dream job is in traditional banking. And it probably makes sense that you'd wear a suit in your profile photo. If I'm hiring a manager and I see you're not wearing a suit, I'm going to think, do they fit the culture? I don't think so. However, if you're a barista and uh, have opened up a coffee shop for cyclists, or if you're, give me something else here, an artist, wearing a suit wouldn't necessarily reflect your professional brand. So don't uh, don't, I suppose, consider what it is, consider who it is you're trying to, to reach and dress appropriately in, in relation to that. Last point uh, about our profile before we move on. Help your readers visualize who you are with a great profile picture on LinkedIn. Users with profile photos do receive up to 21 times more views. So not having a profile picture at all, not a good idea. Some things to avoid. Um, <laughs> And you would be surprised. I do this. I do this every day. Um, hey, John, can you look at my LinkedIn profile? And some of the stuff I see, these are all stock images because I can't embarrass people in public. But uh, my guy here on the left, I call him Group Shot Greg. Greg was at a wedding with his pals. He's dressed in a suit. He's got a cool pair of sunglasses on. And he's thinking to himself, gosh, I look good. Um, and he's cropped his pals out. You can see Mr. Neck here and someone's fringe is on the right-hand side. Look, this is probably a great photo, but it's not a professional photo. Greg, take the time to take a photo of yourself with no one else in it and that reflects your professional values. The throwback. This is a beautiful photo. There's no doubt about it. But the bride in this picture, this picture is very unlikely to reflect their professional values. Maybe, maybe, maybe I don't have all the information there, but... 99% of cases, this is a reflection of their personal experience, not their professional values. So avoid photos like that. Third in here, Annie the Adventurer, I call her. 
I see what she's trying to do here. She's trying to showcase her love of the outdoors, her love of adventure. She's a risk taker. She's an innovator. And she's hoping her profile picture will do it. But as a recruiter, I have no idea what Annie looks like apart from her legs. (laughs) There's a lovely mountain here in the background, but that doesn't help me get to know Annie. So in the split second, it's going to take me to decide, am I going to click on Annie's profile or am I going to move on? I'm going to move on every single time, and Annie's missed an opportunity. And the party animal. Um, hopefully I don't need to say this, but if, you're in, if your profile picture is of you in a bar, holding a beer, maybe a cigarette in your mouth, get out. Uh, no, <laughs> um, definitely a no-go. Again, professional values, okay? Here's some best practices, okay? So I have four lovely, high-quality head and shoulder shots. Each person has done a very good job of removing distracting backgrounds. Uh, our one second from the left here has actually used the blur effect very effectively. Their head and their shoulders are taking up 60% of the frame, high quality. And one thing I should say as well, the camera phone in your pocket is perfect. You know, you don't need to go out and pay someone to take a photo shoot. What your iPhone or your Samsung or whatever it is, as long as it's not ancient, will probably take a great photo uh, for you there, okay? And the last thing is, notice my, my lad here, and uh, third, from the, third from the left. Um, notice how he's not wearing a suit. Maybe his target audience, maybe his target network is typically or traditionally a more casual audience. So he can get away with it. That's a great profile picture if it matches his target audience. Okay. I do not need these at all, it seems. Okay, brilliant. I want to move on quickly to our LinkedIn banner. So your LinkedIn banner is that picture that occurs above your profile picture at the very top of your LinkedIn page, okay? Consider this as your own digital billboard. Your LinkedIn banner is your space to project your professional values, your career goals, and the things that are important to you. I'm not going to pretend for a second that your LinkedIn banner is the most important thing on your profile. It's definitely not. But it is a really good way to leave a first impression. That visual element boosts engagement on your profile. And it might just be that thing that causes your recruiter to, to, uh, to read on or, your, or the person that's on your profile. Has anyone used Canva before? Yeah, Canva is a brilliant tool. CVs, but also LinkedIn banners, okay? You can get a free template and you can make it beautiful as well. So um, yeah, go on Canva if you, if you haven't got one, okay? Click too soon. All right. Uh, After your profile picture and after your name, after your name, what's the first thing I'm going to read on your LinkedIn profile? Headline. Ah, shouldn't have clicked. (laughs) Your LinkedIn headline, okay? So your headline is a uh, 220-character piece of text that will occur below your name. Uh, And I... Don't mean to overstate it, but your headline is one of the most important factors on your profile. It is often the reason a recruiter, a hiring manager, or someone you've invited to connect will choose to scroll on or accept your invitation or reject it entirely. It's important that we make it good. It's your elevator pitch, okay? Uh, It should be a snapshot of your skills, experience, and your career goals. Um, you have an opportunity here to be really specific and include keywords that are important to the recruiter or the person that you're trying to engage on the network. Uh, And be bold. You know, uh, those who dare win, is that what they say? Well, in this case, those who dare get more profile views. So use your headline and use it really effectively. And let's look at some examples here. The LinkedIn standard, let's just say I uh, work for Centra um, and I am cashier. So cashier at Centra. That's the standard. It's role at company. There's nothing here that helps me stand out from the thousands of other cashiers at the relevant supermarkets on LinkedIn. Absolutely nothing at all. Um, And remember, the whole point is standing out. Let's look at this first point. Business to business inside sales rep. 
1.4 million generated in 2022. Now that could, re that could read uh, business to business inside sales rep Microsoft or whatever the company is he works for. But instead he's put his achievement or she's put her achievement up there. 1.4 million generated in 2022. If I'm a recruiter and I'm looking to hire someone in sales, I can see right off the bat without knowing anything about this person that they've generated 1.4 million in sales. I want that. I want to learn more. I'm going to click on and I'm going to read more. Our second point, role helping X do Y, or yeah, helping X do Y. <laughs> so social media manager, helping software startups manage and grow their social media to drive more sales. If I'm a founder of a software startup, this is music to my ears. Maybe I'm worried about my social media growth, my digital marketing strategy, and you can be sure I'm worried about my sales. If I'm hiring, or even if I'm not hiring, this is someone I'm going to want to, be, want to have in my network. They've spoken directly to me in 220 characters or less. So that's your headline. Um, I'm going to actually, uh, just for the sake of time, I can feel myself here. I'm, uh, uh, I'm tempted to keep chatting, but I, but I won't. Um, I'm going to put together our next three sections. That is the about section, the education section, and the experience section. Now, each of these sections do deserve their own time, but for the sake of time, I'm going to cram them together because there are some fundamental threads that apply to all three of these sections. Your about section is considered your professional summary. Your experience section is your work experience in the past, and your education section is where you'll list your academic achievements. The one thread that flows through all three of these sections is intent. Who is your target audience here? Who are you trying to communicate to? Who are you writing this for? So to use an example, I'm an interview coach. Um, you are my target audience. Hello, nice to meet you. Thanks very much. Um, I am hoping to engage with people that have job interviews coming up or they are... Uh, worried about their CV or, and they, they need it reviewed or whatever it is. I'm here to support them in their career and help them to move into jobs that they love. So it's really important that I can project that I have the skills and the competencies to help you achieve that in these sections. And I think I do. I have many. I have a master's in leadership in HR. As I mentioned, I was a people manager. I worked with hundreds of CVs and did interviews and all that. I worked as a careers guidance counselor at a university. So I have the skills in the background, but there are actually a ton of other things I've done that actually aren't relevant for, uh, at all. So for example, has anyone here ever been to an Apple store? Yeah, I was the genius bar manager for a while. Yeah, very impressive. Um, not really. I'm about as far away from a genius when it comes to technical repairs as it gets. My job was essentially managing the repairs and dealing with customers who were angry that they dropped their iPhone down the toilet and didn't buy the Apple Care. Is that relevant to you at all? No, it's not at all. So you can be sure I haven't put that in my profile. Or if I have, I've really minimized it because it's not relevant to my target audience. So these sections require you to really understand who your target audience is and present your experience, present your education, and present yourself in a way that's as appealing as possible to them. And the moral of the story is also by Apple Care. Never. <laughs> All right. Uh, perhaps the most underutilized uh, section of a LinkedIn profile is the last section we'll talk about before moving on is your skills section. So your skills section is a fine tool for showcasing your skills. You might be great at communication and great at analytical skills and storytelling and all that stuff. Put it up there for sure. But where the skills section really starts to pay off is that it aids your discoverability on the platform. So, for example, hiring managers, recruiters, they are searching for people on this platform with specific skill sets. So, by you having those skill sets strategically listed on your profile, you make yourself far more discoverable by the right people. And that's it. That is my first P, um, profile. 
And it's important that you do this first. There's no point in putting yourself out there on LinkedIn, engaging a, a network and, and, and you know, posting content if you haven't got the fundamentals down, which is your profile, okay? So that's step one. But I am sorry to say that is the easy part. Any schmuck can put a profile together, put a profile picture up, and you know, throw an about section together, and that's about it. It's building your presence on LinkedIn. That's where the grind begins. It's where the 1% begins to separate from the 99%, and it's where you can really stand out, even if you have less experience, even if you have less skills than your competition. Is where you can overtake them, okay? Um, one second. Oh, yes. Building your presence on LinkedIn, it requires patience, it requires boldness, and most of all, it requires persistence. So we're going to look at exactly how to do that. You've built a strong profile, now it's time to let recruiters and your target audience know that you're here. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to begin to build your network. Um, nothing says LinkedIn newbie like a profile with two or three connections or even 20 or 30 connections. It makes sense that the more connections you have, the wider reach you will have, the more influence you will build, and the more authority as a thought leader you'll have whenever you're posting your content. But I don't mean uh, connecting with people for the sake of a connection, for the sake of you know, that one extra connection on your profile. I mean being very, very strategic about who you're connecting with. And what that requires, again, is a strong understanding of your target audience. So let's make a plan as to exactly how you can do that. Just before I move on, did anyone get the office reference there? No? Never mind. It's okay. <laughs> I'm watching the office at the minute. Um, LinkedIn has a very powerful and very handy search, search tool built in. It's totally free. Um, um, what you can do is you can search for relevant targets within your target industry or within your target company. You can search for them by location. You can search for them by uh, company. And you can search for them by area of expertise. So let's imagine for a moment that I, my dream is to work for Google. Um, it's my dream job, and that's what I want to do. And what I want to do is connect with people that are uh, working in that environment who can essentially, hopefully, open the door for me some stage in the future. So what I can do here is I can go on to LinkedIn search tool. I can search with filters. I can filter it by location being Ireland, company being Google, and I can search for the term recruiter. And that has brought up 36 results. 36 results showing recruiters at Google in Ireland that are my target audience. I can reach out to them and I can begin uh, uh, essentially engaging them uh, and, and proving to them that I'm the real deal. Um, so something to consider here. 36 results might seem like a lot. It's actually not. Um, now you can vary around the keywords, but there's only a certain amount of people in that company that are going to be relevant connections for you. So you have one shot at this. And it's very, very important that you get it right. Uh, whenever I returned from Canada, I worked for a great marketing company in Belfast. And uh, it was my job, essentially, to grow people's networks on LinkedIn. So let's just say someone worked in sales. I'd take the keys to their profile, and I would build their network with relevant targets by running what we call lead generation campaigns. Not important. Uh, so I ran many campaigns. And I can tell you now, the invitations to connect that I sent that did not include a personal message along with the invitation always failed. If you're inviting a recruiter on Google to connect and you haven't taken the time to express to them who you are and why you want to connect, you're absolutely wasting your time. The campaigns that I ran that contained a personalized, honest, and transparent message as to why you're connecting were always the most successful. Now, I don't want to pull the wool over your eyes either. Prepare for rejection. You know, you might think to yourself, gosh, this person is perfect for my network. They might turn you down. The likelihood is that they will turn you down. Um, a 40% connection rate would be great. 
20% probably more realistic. And that's where the persistence and the boldness comes in, okay? Prepare for rejection, but it will pay off. Oh, yeah, all right, okay. Um, who here has uh, Instagram? Everyone, okay, everyone has Instagram, right? Uh, I have Instagram as well. This is me and my son. His name's Jack. This is the last post that I made on Instagram, all right? Um, it was right before my daughter was born, and it was just one of those authentic, cheesy posts that I knew people would like, all right? Um, I made that post on the 12th of April, 2021, over two years ago. Anyone that scrolls across my profile on Instagram right now would be right enough to think that I've deleted the app. But I have an admission to make. I didn't delete the app. I am on that app every single day. Some people might call me a bit of a lurker. I wake up in the morning, not in a creepy way. Uh, I wake up in the morning, I open Reels, and I just start scrolling. My average screen time per day on Instagram is 37 minutes. Now, that is embarrassing, but it's also true. And why am I telling you this? Don't go on LinkedIn simply to consume content. There are a thousand better things you can do with your time than that. Engage with your network. Post content that's absolutely valuable to them and that will essentially help them. Um, And uh, yeah, absolutely, don't be a lurker on LinkedIn. So we're going to look at how you start creating content. You've You've built the profile, you've developed a habit of uh, sending connection requests, and you're connecting with the right people. Now it's time to engage them. Now it's time to show them that you have a strong area of expertise um, and show them your professionalism, etc., etc. Now, I'm not here to teach you to be an influencer on LinkedIn. I'm here to teach you how to stand out on LinkedIn. There's tons of ways. We could talk about this all day, and we still wouldn't go through it all. But my intent here is to show you the basics and make it simple enough that you can repeat this uh, and experience that success. So there's three kinds of posts that I want to look at uh, that will help you develop that reputation, develop that uh, authority on LinkedIn. And the first is text only. We've all seen them. Text only posts can drop a little nugget of wisdom onto your network and it can be a great way of engaging people. You see some people use it really, really well by posting perhaps an unpopular opinion. You see people posting something and they'll say something outrageous, but just simply for the sake of engagement. Uh, That's a great example of a text-only post. People sometimes share lists, my top five points for, my top recommendations for, whatever that may be, and they they, uh, adopt that text-only form, that list form, really, really well done. Uh, And these posts are engineered to be engaged with. So if you can do them right, they will be punchy and engaging. If you do them wrong, they'll be boring and cumbersome. Someone that does it really well, he's speaking in here next, is Paddy Jobsman. If you're ever on his account, he uses video very, very well. Um, And it can be a great way of showing who you are, your professional and personal values, and it just gives the viewer an idea of who you are beyond what they read on your profile. And then... Simple, graphics and photos. So pictures and graphics are a fantastic way to make a statement and make it memorable on LinkedIn. According to LinkedIn, 65, your, your post will be 65% more likely to be retained if it includes uh, a graphic or a photo associated with the text that you post. Now, what I want people to retain is who you are, the, the value that you offer, and essentially when a job comes up or something that uh, a value comes up to you, that they're thinking this is the right person for that job. Um, okay, so a few best practices when it comes to posting content. Oh, we're getting there. Okay, right. Uh, who's your recruiter? Again, we want to write our content for the person that is uh, is going to be reading it. What, who's your audience? Uh, who's your targets, and write your content to fit their needs, okay? Mold it around them. Research the keywords that are relevant for them and inject them into your content. That'll make you more discoverable on the platform. Include visuals we talked about. Be authentic. You can smell BS on LinkedIn a mile away. Be authentic. Post stuff that is meaningful and valuable to you uh, and not just like looking for likes, you know? Look at patterns, look at what's working, and make a plan. Hold yourself accountable to that plan. And be satisfied with good enough. 
I'm about to finish, but uh, I am a perfectionist when it comes to posting on LinkedIn. I am the sort of person that I just won't post it at all uh, unless I am assured that it will be successful, that it will get a certain amount of likes or a certain amount of engagement. The reality is, if you're like this, you're never going to post. The way to get better is posting, er, at posting is by posting. Be satisfied with good enough. Uh, one of my favorite uh, books is by a fellow named James Clear. Uh, and James says, it's easy to get bogged down trying to find the optimal plan for something. Uh, we're so focused on figuring out what the best approach is that we never get around to taking action. As Voltaire once wrote, the best is the enemy of the good. In this case, the best is the enemy of good enough. The way you get better at posting is by posting, learning from your mistakes, and try it, trying again. Now, I don't have time for this. I have an engagement strategy. Take a photo of it. Come talk to me afterwards. This is super simple. It's going to take five minutes of your time every single day. And I promise you, if you can do this every day, Monday to Friday, take your weekends off, you will experience greater success on LinkedIn. You'll engage with a network. Uh, you'll engage with a network of meaningful connections across all levels in the industry and the organization of your choice. You will open up an, uh, an entire smorgasbord of opportunities that would not have been available to you other ways, okay? My last P, persistence, okay? Uh, as I mentioned, LinkedIn, it is your success there is the result of daily habits, not once in a while mammoth efforts, Okay? Uh, I find this quote really inspiring. When nothing seems to help, I go and look at a stone cutter hammering away at his rock, perhaps a hundred times without as much as a crack showing in it. Yet at the hundred and first blow, it will split in two, and I know it was not the last blow that did it, but all that had gone before. Your LinkedIn and so many things in this life are exactly the same. You're going to be on there, you're going to be posting, you're going to be facing rejection, you're going to be uh, feeling like you're getting nowhere, all I can say is keep hammering away. You will experience success if you do. Thank you very much.